Eating and swallowing is something that we often take for granted, and it's actually really complicated. So from birth, children go meeting steps in a predictable order. So they start from nursing from a breast or bottle to eventually transitioning to eating table foods. Those steps that they master over time are what we call milestones. So they're what you can expect a child to do through the different stages of development. At birth, um, a baby is going to suck or swallow from a breast or a bottle. By the time they get closer to six months, they're going to be sitting on their own and they're gonna start showing interest in your food. They might start leaning towards a spoon or looking at your food when you're eating dinner. Around that time, we expect them to start eating soft, smooth purees, things like a baby food. As they start to get a little bit older, we'll see them start chewing foods. Usually between nine and 12 months, they'll start eating things that have more texture, um, require their mouths to move a little bit more, you might see them start drinking from a straw or an open cup. And around a year of age, we expect them to be eating a nice variety of foods and, and foods that your family can eat together. There are lots of reasons why children don't meet milestones. Some of those reasons might be due to a diagnosis like prematurity or being born early, or because of a syndrome or a genetic difference that predisposes them to having developmental delays. Other answers aren't as clear, and it might be because a child experienced an illness or has another medical condition or an extended hospitalization that has um, resulted in them not developing the way we expect. These milestones are going to help parents be able to talk to their pediatrician when they have a concern. Some signs of a developmental delay might be more clear, like a child not sitting up around nine months or not showing interest in food at 10 to 12 months. But sometimes other problems are a little bit more subtle. So if parents are seeing missing groups of skills at different ages, they'll be able to voice their concern to their pediatrician who can refer them for the help that they need. Now, not every child's going to meet every single skill at the expected time frame. That's normal, um, and differences in development happen. But if you're seeing missing skills over a period of time or your child's not progressing, it will give parents a way to talk to their pediatrician so they're confident. Families should go see a speech-language pathologist who specializes in feeding and swallowing. SLPs can help families in a variety of ways, such as helping an infant learn to suck or swallow from a breast, or helping a child learn to eat foods, expose them to new foods, um, and support the family so that feeding is an enjoyable experience for all. Feeding is so many things. Of course, we require nourishment to live and to grow, but eating is a social and an emotional experience for families. And when a child doesn't eat or drink, well, it can create an immense amount of stress for the family. They might start avoiding social um, activities. They might avoid their families and friends. We know that memories are made at the dinner table, and we want those memories to be positive instead of negative. SLPs can help support families in managing feeding difficulties and making mealtimes positive. Mm -hmm.